it's Brianna and Jana with Credit Law Center. Uh, we are just going to um, share some credit advice this week. Um, Less Mortgage asked us to um, be part of their segment, so we really appreciate that. Um, we're going to just discuss some, some misconceptions about credit, and Jana's going to go through and answer some questions that we've had. Um, we posted on Facebook to see what people are asking, and we want to make sure we get you that feedback. Um, so we're going to just jump right in. Um, so the first thing that a lot of people ask is, why is my credit different online um, when they pull up those scores, and then um, why is it different than when the lender pulls it? That's a great question. I think we get asked this more than any other question, um, and it's completely confusing for most people, even people that are in the industry, like real estate agents, loan officers, and everything. So understand that the scores that you pull up online are not actual FICO scores. They're not anywhere really close than what your loan officer or say a car dealership or a credit card company would pull up. So they're called advantage scores or consumer scores. They're typically much higher than what your actual FICO scores will be. So um, typically they start out about a 500 and into the 1,000. They calculate everything much different. They are good to see what's positive and negative, negative on your credit report, but you don't want to use them and think that you're actually looking at your FICO scores. Now, I even monitor my credit, but I want to see what's positive, what's negative, and make sure everything is going the way I think it is. So use it for that, but understand if you're trying to look at that and think that that's your actual scores, it's not. It, like I said, it's typically much higher than what a FICO score will be. So a lot of people, then they get pretty frustrated at their lender because they're like, hey, I just pulled my credit and it says this and now you tell me it's 100 points lower. Yeah, I feel really bad for our loan officers. So, so many times, you know, they look it up and you know, their credit and they're like, or they think it's their FICO scores and they're like, oh, this is awesome. You know, I'm at 680. It's much higher than what I thought it was. And then they call their loan officer. They think they're ready to go ahead and purchase a home and they're in the low 600s. So it's not your loan officer's fault. Don't beat them up at all. It right. really isn't. But it's just the way that, that their scores are calculated. And um, and they like I said, they start out much higher. Now, even within FICO scores too, and a lot of people don't understand this, there's 56 different versions of FICO so if you go into a car dealership or apply for a credit card those scores are typically going to be a little bit higher than if you would go in to apply for a mortgage so credit card companies and um, car dealerships usually use FICO version 9 mm -hmm. and then um, lenders are using FICO version 4 that's not going to change anytime soon Freddie and Fannie Mac are the ones who dictate that and it would literally cost billions of dollars to get that switch so then um, we kind of talk about um, or we talk about a lot with um, the errors on reports um, what is the number of errors or what's what's the likelihood or the percent of air, credit reports that contain errors it's terrible um, it's 79 percent so 79 percent of all credit reports contain errors which is a huge number and there's literally no other industry in the world that could get by with that 79% of the time, except for maybe the IRS or the weathermen. That's my favorite saying, but it really is staggering, and most people don't even understand that, which means that 79% of the viewers on here have errors on their credit report. 79% of the people in this coffee shop have errors on their credit report. That's that's real facts. That's real information, um, and they've proven that. So um, on credit reports, people have got, you know, they've got their collections or their charge-offs, you know, all of that stuff on their reports, judgments. Um, Let's talk a little bit because I know you know even sometimes lenders will tell people that they can pay go and pay a collection off. Yeah. Um. So, does paying a collection help um, the credit score or um, how does that affect their report? So obviously you would think common sense would tell you if you have a collection on your credit report and you go and pay it off, it's going to help, right? That's absolutely false. And please understand that I'm I'm not being like over dramatic or anything. If you pay a collection that's showing up on your credit report, you have a huge prob probability of your scores actually lowering. Now the reason why is because instead of it just showing up at, like or removing after you pay it, it shows up as a paid collection versus a collection. So it's like the difference of having 10 stitches instead of 12. So you're actually harming your scores. So let's say I go to the emergency room three years ago and then they throw it on my credit report. If I go and pay it today, what's gonna happen is the last date of activity from three years ago is now gonna be today's date because they're reporting that something has changed, that I paid it off, it shows up, paid collection, and now my scores have actually lowered. I've seen it lower over 100 points, Brianna. It's a big, big deal. So be careful if you do have collections on your credit report. Um, make sure you know what you're doing and, and you know what to do. Uh, you can always call us and get um, some a consultation to find out what to do, but just don't think that you can just pay it off and it fixes it and your scores go up. They most likely will go down. So then the other thing that's impacting their scores um, is late pays where people are like, oh, I just had 130 day late. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, let's kind of talk a, a little bit because people had questions about that. What's the late pays do to the credit report? So one late pay, one 30 day late can damage your scores anywhere, depending on what else is going on with your credit, but anywhere between 30 to 50 to 80 points. So one late pay is absolutely 
absolutely terrible for your credit. Uh, you want to make sure that you're paying everything on time. Now, once you do, let's say that you had a hiccup, and you know what, guys, I've been there too. Um, but you had a hiccup, you know, you go through a divorce or you have a medical issue or job loss or whatever. It's going to take about 24 months to actually heal from that. You won't be exactly back where you are, but you are going to be healing. And then it kind of starts slowing down um, as far as the, the power of that um, after about 24 months. Okay, so then um, if they're trying to figure out how to, um, you know, get their scores back up or trying to take care of those late pays, um, what's a good way to start to build their credit and um, you know what's what's a healthy credit report look like so a healthy credit report so what your I would say what your ideal situation would be with your credit um, you want to make sure that you have four trade lines and trade lines is what I mean it's like credit cards or installment loans installment loans are going to be home loan auto loan personal loan so I like to say a good rule of thumb is two credit cards a home loan and an auto loan that's going to give you a good thick credit pro profile now also keep in mind that history is so important. So many times people make the mistake and they think that uh, payment history is 100% of what's making up your FICO score. That's only actually 35%. So you wanna make sure that you have good, thick history. So um, you want your credit cards and uh, to be, like keep them until your grandchildren have children. And then as far as your installment loans, and again, that's gonna be home loan, auto loan, personal loan, you wanna make sure that you're paying on those for 12 months or more. That's gonna give you a really good, thick credit profile. Make sure that you're always maintaining um, those four trade lines at all times. So if you pay off your car, make sure you have some other type of installment loan. Also, keep your credit card balances about 30 to 60 days before you go in to apply for any type of loan. Pay the balances down as low as possible. So a really good rule of thumb is the older the credit card, the lower the balance, the better your FICO scores. So that's a really great way to manipulate your FICO scores in a positive direction by paying those credit card balances down to zero to 10%. Honestly, guys, that's the best place you, you can be right before you go in. And again, about 30 to 60 days before you go in to apply for a loan, getting paid down as low as possible. So is there a little, I know we kind of discussed this a little bit for the viewers, is there a trick, um, say they don't have the funds to pay those down, what, what's the next thing they can do? That's a great question. One of the things you can do if you have good payment history with that credit card company, you can go ahead and call them and ask them to raise the limits. Now a lot of times I get asked like, oh well are they really gonna do that? Come on now, like what do credit card companies want you to do? They want you to spend money. Right. So that's not an invitation to go shopping, but what it is gonna do is it's gonna give you that bigger break between that limit and that balance. Okay, um, so then what happens, um, say they um, don't want to go get credit cards, um, maybe they can't get approved for a loan, um, what's, what's some alternative options for them then? So I know a lot of times I talk to people and they're just very credit shy. So maybe they went through a bankruptcy or they saw their parents go through financial woes and so they're just kind of scared of credit. Or they have a sense that credit cards are actually quote unquote bad or installment loans are bad and they say, oh I pay everything with cash. That's great, but understand that you're if you don't have trade lines, then FICO has nothing to grade you off of. So it's kind of like if you don't turn your homework into your teacher, she has nothing to grade you off of. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have a score. Or if you do have any type of score, it's going to be very, very low. And if you don't have trade lines, the only reason why you're going to have a score is if you have some type of collections. So you want to make sure that you do have credit cards. Just be responsible for them. You know, if you have a you have a shopping problem or something like that, you obviously don't take your credit cards into the mall. Right. If you love shoes, you don't take your credit card into a shoe shop. I can't to me yeah so um, anyway but you want to make sure that you do have trade lines um, or you're gonna pay extremely high interest rates if you do end up having to get some kind of loan mm -hmm. um, if you don't have credit cards a lot of times you can't rent vehicles okay. uh, your insurance rates are gonna be extremely high there's sometimes in the military uh, they're unable to move up in rank if they don't have high FICO scores you will not have a high FICO score if you do not have trade lines I cannot stress that enough so you just kind of have to play the game guys and it just it is what it is be responsible know your weak points mm -hmm. and avoid those like I do at shoe stores everybody knows that that knows me but you do need trade lines or you're not gonna have a FICO score okay and then uh, just kind of wrapping things up um, so of course we love what we do but what what are they supposed to be looking for in a credit repair company um, we're not trying to push credit loss center on them but um, what what should they do they need to do their research of course to figure out what what's good and what's not um, what should they be looking for yeah I'm glad that somebody asked that because that's so important there's so many different options out there for credit repair and if you don't know what you're looking for sometimes you can get into um, a situation where you're paying a lot of money mm -hmm and it's spread out for a long period of time and nothing really happens. So it's really important when you're going out and you're looking for a credit repair company that you actually find someone that is actually a law firm. And I'm saying it like that, not to be condescending, but there are companies out there that have the word law in their name and trust and believe they're not a law firm. So um, I can only speak for ourselves, but we actually have five attorneys in-house and staff that work um, 
all day, every day, going up about, you know, against the big guys. And when I say big guys, I mean like TransUnion, Equifax, and um, Experian. Those are the credit bureaus, and they fight for the little guys. So you want to make sure that they actually are a law firm. The other thing um, that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're only paying for results. There's no reason for you to pay a monthly fee every single month to hope something happens. Why would you do that? Yeah. So, um, for example, again, um, with Credit Law Center, we only charge for what we're able to remove from a credit report. So if we go after 25 collections and only remove 15, we're only going to charge for the 15 we removed, not the 25 we went after. And then speed's another thing too. There's absolutely no reason why credit repair needs to be drug out for a year, year and a half, anything like that. Yeah, they're trying to get, they're trying to move into a house like today. Right, right. exactly. So yeah. you can sign up for another credit repair company um, if you want, but then you're looking at a year, year and a half, hoping that something happens. Yeah. So our average turnaround time is anywhere between 80 to 120 days. Now, if uh, one of our clients need to establish credit, that's just time on the clock because remember, as I said earlier, you want to make sure that you have your credit established for about nine to 12 months for it to really help and then also for you to be able to be approved for a home loan so that's really important and vital but the credit repair process shouldn't be long and drawn out and excruciating it really shouldn't I mean it takes a little work um, a little bit of skin in the game we need our clients to cooperate with us and do what we tell them to do mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that's interesting is a reg regular credit repair company a consumer can actually do more than what they can so that's why it's so important it has to have that law piece. So I'm not saying you have to use us, but what I'm saying is that when you find somebody, make sure you're only paying for results, make sure they do have, they are, really are a law firm and they have attorneys there um, in-house, and make sure you know what you're getting into. Don't, don't get caught up on the phone when you listen to a sales pitch. Yeah. So um, just to kind of recap um, or to, to wrap it up, um, you know, we are um, always about education and um, continuing to help clients because we don't want to have repeat clients. Um, so we do things like this where we're continuing to educate. Um, we really want to thank Less Mortgage for asking us to be part of this this week. Yes, thank you. Um, and then the other thing too is if you've got any questions, um, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Um, visit our website, www.creditlawcenter.com. Um, we're constantly educating. We've got blogs, follow the Facebook, um, the Instagram, whatever you want to do. We are never going to push um, our company on you we want you to come to us if there's anything that you've got questions on um, our advisors are always there to help and um, again thanks for having us this week and you guys have a great weekend yep see ya thanks